Since our last video aired, Lake Elsinore Casino closed its doors for poker. So now if you have an itch to play and you're in the Los Angeles area, you have to drive to an Indian reservation. The Indian reservation of choice for this video is Morongo Casino, which is located about one and a half hours south of LA. And upon arriving, we're greeted with the pleasant surprise of 80 plus people on both the 1-3 and 2-5 boards. Gotta love COVID. Not to fear though, our good buddy, and a few of you might know him, he goes by the name of Mariano Poker. Yeah, that guy. He threw up our name on No Limit boards for us about an hour ago while we were driving down, so it shouldn't take too much longer, right? Psych! Five hours later and we finally get a seat. No, really, I'm not joking. It was actually five hours until we got a seat. We sit down at a 2-5 table, it's seven-handed, and we're in for 500. And occasionally upon sitting down to start a session, a good hand sneaks up on us and we're not ready to record. And that's kind of what happened today because we miss a hand where I flopped a flush draw, turned a pair, stuck around and rivered the flush against a guy who had two pair. And it turned out to be a decent pot, like around $270. Pick up the first hand here, we have pocket tens in the big blind, and everybody but the cutoff calls. Obviously I don't want to play this six ways, so I raise it to 35. The hijack and the button are non-believers, and they stick around for the flop. 115 in the pot comes ace of spades, eight of hearts, nine of diamonds, which is not the best board for our specific hand, but a range should have a bunch of aces in it, so I bet $45 and they both oblige and fold. I don't think we want to check there and give the opponent ideas on the turn. They can easily represent an ace, they can bet, and then we may be forced to fold our hand. Either way, we drag that $160 pot and we're on to the next hand. 650 now in our stack and we're in the button with 910 of spades. Short-handed here, a couple players went to get some food. I think we're playing four or five handed. I raise it to 20. Small blind and the middle position player call, so we're going three ways to the flop with 65 in the pot, which comes king, seven, four, two spades. We flop a flush draw and uh, it gets checked to me. I think I need to be c betting here, so that's what I do for $45, but surprisingly, they both make the call. So I'm definitely putting someone on a king, maybe someone else has a pocket pair or a seven. Either way, we're going three ways to the turn with 200 in the pot. The turn comes the jack of clubs which gives us way more outs. Any spade gives us a flush now and any queen or eight gives us the straight, around 15 outs that we have. Small blind now takes the lead and bets $105 and the middle position player folds. I think calling here is the best option because what am I actually representing if I raise? Obviously I'd like to raise and get him to fold, represent a really strong hand, but what really strong hands am I representing? If I had a king in this spot I would just call. So with that being said, that's what I do. I put in the 105 and we're gonna need help on the river. Please dealer, one time, we have 15 outs, 30%. Please put one of those cards out there. But that's not what he does. He puts the nine of diamonds. Although it gives us a pair, we're never good here. Our opponent shoves for 250 and we can't call this. I mean, we'd be just bluff catching at this point. Um, the spade draw bricks out, so I guess that could make sense, but we have two of those cards, making it less likely that that's what he has. Most likely he has a set of sevens or fours, um, or some weird two pair combo, although that's unlikely because I raise it to 45. <laughs> Forced to rebuy for $100 and we look down at ace of clubs, ten of spades on the button. When it gets folded to the button, this hand is definitely good enough to put in a raise, so I raise it up to $15 in just the big blind calls. Heads up to the flop comes queen, seven, three, rainbow. We obviously hit nothing here and we can't always be c betting, so when the big blind checks to me, I check it back. Still 35 in the pot, the turn comes the king of spades, which gives us a gutter to the straight. Jack peels off, we have the straight, which would be optimal. Obviously, we can still hit an ace or a 10, and we'll probably be good here. So I decided to bet $10 into 35. I think it's definitely way too small. I should be sizing up between 25 and 30 if I want to get him to fold. 
Our mistake here shows when he puts in the call for ten dollars. Fifty-five in the pot, the river comes to five of hearts, a complete blank, and he checks for a third time here, and uh, I'm a little bit greedy. I want to win it all. All that money that's out there needs to come into my stack, so I decide to bet 45 into 55. Um, he obviously sniffs this out here. I, just talking right now to you guys, looking back at this hand, I think it's a mistake. My bet on the turn shows weakness, and my bet on the river is just way too big. If I want to get paid and go for value, I would have bet a lot smaller. So by me betting a lot bigger, it actually makes it look like I'm bluffing. He sniffs it out and calls with 710. So he completely owns us with a pair of sevens, and he's going to take that $145 pot to the bank. Nice read, sir. Four seventy now in our stack. We look down at Ace Three of Hearts from under the gun. I limp. The cutoff raises to fifteen. The big blind calls, and I call now, looking to play a big pot three ways. The flop with fifty in the pot comes Queen of Hearts, Five of Clubs, Nine of Hearts, which is a great flop for us. We have some backdoor straight possibilities, but obviously the best thing is the front door flush draw that we have flopped. So for that reason, I decide to lead for thirty dollars here, which I think is unorthodox, but I like to play unorthodox sometimes. So that's what I do. I bet 30 and the cutoff wants to see another card, but the big blind does not. Heads up to the turn with 110 in the pot comes the queen of spades, which uh, obviously pairs the queen, making it less likely that he, the opponent has a queen in his hand. So for that reason, I decide to bet $45 and that's what he does. He folds. And so we're going to drag that $155 pot with ace high. Pocket kings are the next hand to bless this vlog and we look down at them from the button with 510 in our stack. Middle position player creates some action and raises it to 15. The cutoff now three bets him to 45, which is great news. We're gonna take that all day. The only thing I need to point out is that this opponent had not been playing too many hands. He's what uh, I'd like to describe as an OMC. So I'm putting him on the top 10%, maybe the top 20% of hands out there. Um, the only good thing is I'll be in position for the rest of the hand. I usually four bet here, but just because of some of those reasons, a couple alarm bells are going off. So I decide to flat and the middle position player gets out of the way. So at least we're not going three ways. Heads up in position to the flop with 115 in the pot. Comes pretty gross. Ace of diamonds, 10 of diamonds, jack of diamonds. Uh, not only is there an ace out there, it seems like every time you have pocket kings, there's an ace on the board. But also we look down at our hand and we do not have a diamond, which is unfortunate. Uh, it's also unfortunate he bets $50 here. He could be representing an ace. He could have a diamond in his hand. It's just not a good spot, but there's 165 in the pot. I just have to call 50, so that's what I do. I call 50, and we're going heads up to the turn. Turn now comes the queen of diamonds, which is very interesting because we make the straight, but it puts the fourth diamond out there. But when you really think about it, what diamonds does he really have after a three bet pre? All of them are pretty much on the board. The ace, the queen, the ten, the jack. The, the king of diamonds would be the only card that he could have in his hand. Maybe ace king with the king of diamonds. King queen with the king of diamonds. Something like that. But with only the king of diamond as a possible hand that he could have to make a flush. I think it's more likely that he has a set, which we have beat with our straight. When he checks to us, uh, I want to see what happens on the river. So I decide to check behind. The river comes the eight of clubs, so at least there's not five diamonds on board. We can still win against all those sets and two pair combos that I mentioned before. He checks again to us, which screams not a flush. Now that he's checked twice, I think it gives us a green light to go for thin value. And I bet around one third pot. I bet $80 here. He thinks about it for a little while and decides to uh, unfortunately fold and he shows ace queen. Anyways, we're going to scoop that $295 pot. Six ten in our stack, we look down at nine ten of hearts from the cutoff. There's two limps. I raise it to twenty five dollars, and the button and the player on my right are the only people that call. It's going three ways to the flop with ninety dollars in the pot, which comes king four four. 
We hit none of it, but occasionally we like to uh, see bet. So that's what I do. I bet $30 into 90 and they both fold. And we're going to scoop that $120 pot. We look down at ace jack of clubs when there's two limps to us in the big blind. I raise it up to $25 here and we just get called from the middle position limper. Heads up to the flop with 60 in the pot gives us top pair with a 4 and a 3 of spades on board as well. I try to build a pot and bet $30 into 60 but uh, he obviously doesn't have any of it and he folds and we add those 90 chips into our stack. 4-6 of clubs here from the big blind and the UTG plus 1 limps. Middle position player raises to 15, the button calls. And now, my mom always said I was an out of the box thinker, and that's no different here when I choose to make the unstandard play of raising to $50 with a 4 6 suited. It's concerning though when the UTG plus one limper decides to call. In these games here in California, when someone limps under the gun and either raises or calls, it's always a very strong hand. It's not usually just like a 4 6 or a 5 7 or a 7 10 kind of hand. It's usually aces, kings, queens, and all that other garbage. Everyone else folds, swing heads up to the flop with that player. 135 in the pot. The flop is a decent one, it comes 7 5 deuce which is a great flop for us. Obviously we have an open-ended straight draw, but like I said before, this board should not connect well with the UTG limper too often. He's gonna have a lot of over cards here. And uh, we just have six high. Yeah, we have a lot of draws, but there's a lot of potential for this hand on the turn and the river, but we still just have six high. So I wanna take it down here. So that's what I do. I bet $50 into 135 and uh, he pretty quickly folds. So uh, we drag that $185 pot. And now here it is, the hand you've all been waiting for, and let me tell you, it definitely does not disappoint. So before I get into it, please drop a like and a subscribe on this video, and now let's jump right into it. 550 in our stack, we have Ace of Spades, King of Hearts from the button, and the early middle position player raises to 15. The late middle position player now calls, and uh, we have Ace King here, which is good enough for a raise, so I make it $60, and they both pretty quickly call, which is pretty normal so far, right? Just wait, it gets really weird. With 190 in the pot, the flop comes eight of spades, three of spades, five of spades. And without hitting this board, this is about the best we could ask for. We have the ace of spades and feel pretty good because we also have the initiative in the hand. But that goes right out the window when the early middle position player bets 250, an over bet. While I'm wondering what he could have and if I'm calling or raising, obviously I'm never gonna fold, I have the ace of spades. The late middle position player now flat calls, which screams a big hand. This honestly always screams a big hand. When someone overbets the pot and someone out of position makes a call with me behind them to left to act, they're gonna have a set at the minimum here, probably a flush. So late middle position player calls, and I'm not going anywhere though. I have outs against queens, jacks, tens, as well as any made flushes and sets. Uh, I can win with another spade. Calling 250 would represent around 50% of my stack. So I decide we might as well play for all the marbles and I shove my 515 stack into the middle. Early middle position player quickly calls. The late middle position player goes all in for an additional $800 covering the early middle position player and the early middle position player says okay. The turn is a six of spades giving us the ace high flush, no sweat for us and the late middle position player turns his cards over and it shows the king high flush which we suspected but wait, there's a hold up because that's when the early middle position player starts acting really confused and said that he didn't call. The dealer now tries to explain to the early middle position player that his chips were across the line and when the late middle position player went all in, he said okay. But since that player saw that the late middle position player exposed his hand and had him crushed with the king high flush, he didn't want to commit his whole stack which I think is kind of shady. They ended up calling over the floor which didn't do much and then they got the eye in the sky involved and they reviewed the tapes which concluded after a couple minutes, you better believe my heart was pounding this entire time, that his chips were over the line. So it stands and the action is closed. One thing I want to point out though is that it's very interesting to note that if the floor ruled that he didn't call the all in, then the dealer put the six of spades preemptively on the turn. It, that would have had to been put back into the deck, thereby taking away the ace high flush, and I would have been pissed. 
Either way, the river came the four of spades, giving us another spade. So in case they put that six of spades back in the deck and the other one came like a seven of hearts or something, the river is the four of spades. That wouldn't have changed. And that gave us the, the extra spade that we needed. The early middle position player showed ace queen with the queen of spades, which now you can kind of understand why he got dramatic when the other guy showed the king high flush. I didn't expose my hand until all the drama was over. The late middle position player had the king jack of spades. And we're going to take down the $1,700 pot, which is the largest pot we've ever won at Morongo in extremely dramatic fashion. After all that drama, we rack up our chips and hit the cage. Wow, what a session that was, you guys. We're into the game for 500 and then we added on for additional 100. And after that really uh, interesting slash controversial hand that you saw just recently, we cashed out of the game for 1718. So we net profit of $1,118 after tips and stuff a little bit less, but ultimately we are gonna love that. Uh, what do you guys think about what happened in that hand? Was that guy supposed to be all in? He put all of his chips over the line and that's what the floor ultimately came to the conclusion. But uh, I, I don't know, I mean, maybe Maybe the dealer went a little too fast and just turned the card, but I think if the dealer, if they came to the decision that he wasn't all in, or he didn't call the all in from the late middle position player, then they would have actually had to put that, the turn that was a spade that gave me the nuts back into the deck. I would have been so tilted, but ultimately the river ended up coming a spade anyway, so I probably would have got there. Um, just really happy about this. I had to drive two hours to make this video for you guys. So it's always nice when we book a big win and don't win 50 bucks or lose 50 bucks. But as always, please like the video. It helps show it to more people like yourselves. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to grow the channel in 2021. Like the video, please comment down below what you thought about that interesting hand and uh, how you like these videos. And always subscribe if you're new here. I think 80% of you watching these videos are new. So please subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.